This video will cover how to assign and use the flight mode feature, as well as the additional functionality it unlocks for AS3X. It is also required to later on set up SAFE. Before going to forward programming, let's assign a flight mode switch to our channel. As you can see here, we still have our knob assigned to our gain channel from the previous first time setup. However, if you don't have enough channels to have a gain channel and a flight mode channel, you'll want to replace your gain channel with the switch. We'll cover what to do later on in Ford Programming in that case, but for now, we're going to assign it to a separate channel. I personally like using the flight mode feature on the transmitter, as this lets me tie voice feedback for flight modes, as well as using independent trim features between each of my gyro modes. So I will use this. However, you can also assign an individual switch, like so. If we're using the flight mode feature, we'll need to go and make sure that the flight mode is actually set up on the transmitter. Here I'll use switch B. Finally, you need to make sure that the channel positions for your flight mode are correct for the actual flight modes on the receiver. So we'll go to digital switch setup for that. I'll choose flight mode here. However, if you're using a switch, you'll want to make sure for the switch you're selecting. Now notice that this defaults to negative 100, negative 50, and 0%. We might have a firmware update for transmitters that changes this to match what the receiver expects. However, we'll want to use this table as a reference for the receiver. Note on this table that flight mode 1, 2, and 3 use channel values 100%, 0%, and negative 100%. This will be the default positions if you assign a switch directly to the channel. However, that's not the case for flight mode feature. So we'll want to manually change those. Note that there's also more than three flight modes on this receiver, up to 10. So if you want to access those flight modes, you'll want to make sure that you access the channel positions indicated in this table. In this case, I want flight mode 1 to be 100%, flight mode 2 to be 0, flight mode 3 will be negative 100%, just as it was indicated in the previous table. Now that we have that set, we can go to forward programming. In forward programming, we'll go to gyro settings. And before we go to flight mode setup, I want to show you something under system setup, utilities. Notice there's an enabled flight modes feature here. Currently, the flight mode setting is capped to a total of three flight modes. But if you've assigned switches to get more than three flight modes, as we covered in the previous table, you'll want to set that max flight mode capacity here. The flight mode 3 limit is set by default just to prevent you from accidentally accessing higher flight modes if you set your digital switch positions wrong. For now, we'll leave it at three flight modes. Now let's go back to our main menu and go to the flight mode setup. Before covering any of these settings, we'll go into flight mode channel, and this is where we will assign the channel that we chose for flight modes this case, AUX3. You can also change the switch assignment here if you want to, but we'll leave it at flight mode as we've already done. Now as I flip my flight mode switch, we'll notice that the indicated flight modes up here change. If these don't properly match what you expect when you flip the switch, then go back and make sure your digital switch setup is set up correctly using the table we displayed previously. If this looks correct for your switch positions, and we'll continue to the setting displayed here, AS3X active. So one other thing to note about this first line is it indicates that settings in this page are usually independent for that selected flight mode. So if I disable AS3X now, but I flip to flight mode two, you'll see that it's active again. So this is indicating that I've disabled it for flight mode one, but flight mode two and three still have it active. I'm going to leave it disabled on flight mode 1, 
as this gives me a gyro off mode to resort to in case I do something poorly during setup. Now that the flight mode channel and switch is set up, let's go back to AS3 settings. Notice that there are some new settings to see here that we did not see before. Heading, fixed adjustable gain, and capture gyro gains. Before we cover the new settings, let's go to AS3X gains again. Notice I have no values displayed in flight mode 1. This is because I disabled AS3X for this mode. If we go to flight mode 2 or 3, however, we will see that there are still gains available. Also note, while I have selected flight mode 3, if I change my roll value, but I change back to flight mode 2, the setting is different. So as indicated before, if you have a flight mode number displayed on the first line, it usually means the settings you're changing are specific to that flight mode. We'll set this back to flight mode, or to 40%. The other thing to remember is that these values are what get scaled by your gain channel. So now that we've reviewed AS3X gains again, let's go over some of the new settings. Before going through heading, we'll want to make sure we've tuned AS3X first, so we'll come back to that later. Let's start with capture gyro gains. In this menu, you'll see what the current gains are based on your base gains, or rather the AS3X gains from the previous menu, and your gain channel. So this is showing what value you end up with with the scaled gain channel values. If I set my knob all the way to 100%, I get 40, 50, 60, which are my actual gain settings. However, as I start turning the knob down, those set values are getting scaled down by that channel value all the way down to zero. So how is this useful to us? Well, to tune the plane this mode, first you'll want to start in flight mode one, which is the mode we've disabled AS3X in, which gives us zero gains on everything. You'll want to take off, get to a relatively safe altitude, and then also get to a relatively high speed. Once you've done this, make sure your knob is all the way at its lowest value and switch to flight mode two. You'll also have zero gains here, but as opposed to flight mode one, as you increase your gain value, your gains will actually start to go up. You'll want to roll the plane back and forth with sudden stops and observe its behavior. As you're doing this, increase the gain until you notice oscillations or bounces in the plane. Once this happens, tone the gain back a little bit until those oscillations go away. Once you've done this, you can land the plane come back to this screen, and then capture your gyro gains. What happens now is the AS3X gains for the flight mode you have selected are saved and fixed. That means they're no longer affected by the gain channel. So you've essentially configured your flight mode 2 to have preset gains, which can no longer be adjusted with the knob. we go back and go to capture gyro gains, I can move my gain channel knob, but nothing happens. However, if I go to flight mode 3, you'll see these still get adjusted, because I have yet to capture the gains in this flight mode. This allows me to tune this flight mode differently if I'd like, such as for having a high speed or a low speed mode. For now, I'll leave this alone, and let's say we've finished tuning flight mode 2. Well, this I mainly focused on tuning roll, but what if I also want to tune pitch and yaw? There are different ways to do this. One is to go to AS3X gains and manually increase the gains for these flight mode up and down in test fly. Or we can go to this fixed and adjustable gain menu, which is another one of the new ones. As you can see, Flight Mode 2 has Roll Pitch and Yaw set to Fixed. This means that they are no longer adjustable by the gain channel. Flight Mode 1 has these hidden as we don't even have AS3X enabled for this mode. Flight Mode 3 still has them adjustable as we haven't used the Capture Gain feature for this flight mode. If I want to adjust pitch independently, I can set this back to adjustable. I'll want to go to AS3X Gains and increase my pitch value, maybe even up to 100% to give us more range. 
Then I'll want to repeat the same process we did before, but instead of checking for roll back and forth, we'll want to pitch up and down with sudden stops, observe those oscillations, and use our knob to adjust that gain. If we go to the capture gain window here, you'll see that as I adjust my knob, only pitch is getting adjusted because that's the only one that has the gain set to adjustable. It'll also have a max value of 100 now, as I've set its AS3X gain to 100. So we can go fly, tune that with our knob. Then once we land, while we're still in flight mode too, we can do capture gains. This will display the gains we end up with. And if we go back to our capture gyro gain screen, you'll note that in flight mode two, as I move the knob, they no longer change. So we've tuned pitch. Then finally, if we want to do the same for yaw independently, we can set that to adjustable, increase its gain, and then repeat that process. Most people will find that just tuning the default gains while focusing on roll will be good enough performance for them. But if they want to go through the extra steps of tuning pitch and yaw independently, they can definitely do that. Now most of this was focused on using a gain channel and a flight mode channel. Now what if you had to replace your gain channel with your flight mode channel as you didn't have enough channels available, or you don't have a trimmer or knob available to adjust those gains? The first thing you'll want to do is go to System Setup, Gain Channel, and make sure you unassign the channel you had previously assigned when you did the first time setup. Now that that's unassigned, we'll go back to AS3X settings, fixed adjustable gain. We'll want to make sure that our gains are set to fixed now. If you set them to adjustable and don't have a gain channel assigned, they'll get defaulted to zero no matter what AS3X gain value you have set. So we'll set those to fixed. Actually, we'll do the same for flight mode three. Then we'll go to AS3X gain. Because these are fixed, you'll probably want to start from zero for all of these. Go to flight mode two and do the same. So now you have your three flight modes, flight mode one, two, and three and they all have our gain set to zero. Now let's start with flight mode two. And we'll focus on roll primarily. Set this to 10%, flight mode three to 20%. Now what we'll do is we have no gyro, 10% gain on roll and 20% gain on roll. We can go take off the model while in our gyro off mode, get up to a safe altitude, and start rolling the plane back and forth with sudden movements. As we stop, we can flip to flight mode two and keep repeating those movements. If the model doesn't oscillate, then we can do this, then we can increase it even more to our 20% position. If, it's, if it oscillates then, then we know we need a gain value slightly less than that. So we can reduce this a little bit, but increase this one more. So we're basically narrowing down what the ideal gain value is by using different flight modes with different gain values. You'll keep repeating this process until you find the ideal gain value. Let's say this ended up being 16%. We'll want to copy that value over to flight mode three as well. And then we'll repeat the process for pitch and yaw. If during the tuning process, you get to the highest possible gain values and it's still not enough, you can use the gain sensitivity multiplier to double or even quadruple your gain values. This basically multiplies the values that you get in this menu. 
So it gives you a total max of 400% for each axis. So now that we've covered how to tune AS3X gains using the available flight mode features of capture gyro gains and fix adjustable gain, let's go over heading hold. Heading hold basically is an extra gain that helps the plane hold the angle it's left at once the stick is released. As soon as the user applies a stick input for either of these axes, the heading hold position for that axis gets reset. One thing to note is these gains do not scale with the gain channel that's used for AS3X gains. They can only be adjusted manually. So you will have to land and adjust these values in between flights to tune it. As you might notice, there's a caution for heading yaw gain. The reason we weren't against it is because a lot of people don't coordinate their turns using both yaw and roll, but instead, use a bank and yank, which is just roll and pitch. This means that the yaw heading hold never gets reset. And as the plane is turning from just roll and pitch inputs, the yaw heading is trying to resist more and more that rotation of the plane. This ends up with the side effect of the plane fighting the user's inputs. If they don't end up applying a yaw input, it could end pretty badly for them. So if you don't understand what this is doing, it's best to just leave it alone, even if it's tempting to use it for things like knife edges and other things like that. Really having just roll and pitch helps a lot for knife edges as you can just apply yaw input to hold the angle and roll and pitch will take care of themselves to some degree. One other thing to note about heading gains is that if you do enable safe later on, these gains have no effect. If you plan on using safe on one of these flight modes, make sure you have no heading gains added to them. So now that we've covered those extra features available from flight modes, let's go back and cover one last feature related to flight modes. Go to System Setup, Utilities. You might have seen this before when we covered enabled flight modes. Copy flight mode setting allows you to copy the settings from one flight mode to another. So let's say we spent most of our time tuning flight mode 2 for AS3X. In the case of safe, you'll want to make sure that you have AS3X tuned in the flight mode to which you'll be adding safe, as it helps improve its performance drastically. So let's say I have flight mode 2 tuned for AS3X, and I'm going to want to use flight mode 3 for safe later on. I'll want to copy those AS3X settings to flight mode 3 in that case. Now before you do this, you'll want to make sure you've used the capture gyro gain feature or at least manually set those gains to fixed, as changing flight modes might also change the gain channel depending on how you've configured your transmitter, and flight mode 3 might not behave the same way as flight mode 2 if those gains are set to adjustable. So before using these feature, make sure your source flight mode has those gains set to fixed. To do this, you will overwrite flight mode 3 settings with flight mode 2 settings. So in summary, flight modes allows having a way to access different stabilization gains and features that are assigned to a switch or pair of switches. In this case, we can have different sets of gains or flight modes with heading hold added. Coming up, we'll use the flight mode feature to configure safe and panic modes.